Every July the 8th, the spinning ball Earth gets destroyed. Every July the 8th, the spinning ball Earth gets destroyed. Every July the 8th, the spinning ball Earth gets destroyed. So wait, you don't believe in the moon landing? Absolutely not. We've been learning about this shit in school for decades. What the f*** do you mean you don't believe in that shit? Are you some type of conspiracy theorist or something? So let me get this straight. Do you really believe that in 1969, when televisions were still in black and white, and folks were still using rotary f***ing phones, and most new cars sold in the United States didn't even have power windows or fucking air conditioning. That we just strapped two cowboys into what was essentially a fucking Coke can with a Chevy small block attached to it. And just launched them fuckers out into orbit on nothing more than a hope and a fucking dream. And somehow managed to land that glorified bottle rocket safely on an uncharted lunar surface. Where they then got out and played hopscotch for a few hours. And then they got right back inside that motherfucker. And then somehow managed to launch themselves back off the goddamn moon with no infrastructure. And then a few short weeks later they landed safely back on Earth. You really can believe that that happened? Goddamn, you're a gullible son of a bitch. I bet you still believe in fucking Santa Claus, you goofy bastard. So let's talk about this alleged space flight from Virgin Galactic, because I think um, when you try to call it a space flight and you try to use it as some kind of proof that you're going to see something like this when you get up there, it really diminishes what the accomplishment is, because it is a phenomenal accomplishment. No one is trying to take anything away from that. But you're not going to go up there and see stars. You're not going to see planets. You're not going to see a little blue marble off in the distance anywhere. Um, I'm sure you probably remember that guy named Felix Bumgarner who famously did the Red Bull um, Edge of Space jump. Well, Felix, he's the guy you remember. He got up there and then lied on TV about seeing the curvature of the Earth. And then Neil deGrasse Tyson also famously um, had to come in and run cover for his lie. Um, so to give you perspective on that, got the globe for you. So 24 miles, I did some math, you know, not Neil deGrasse Tyson or anything, but that's roughly half the distance um, that you're going to be going on this space flight. Well, according to the globe math, that would put you at about four millimeters above the surface of the Earth. And from four millimeters above the surface of the Earth, that stuff is flat. I'm telling you, that stuff is flat. The Chinese shows us a flat horizon. NASA shows us a curved horizon. Somebody is lying here. If the shadow on the moon is caused by the Earth blocking the sun, then explain how this is possible. The Earth is not in the way of the sun at all. They are both in the sky at the same time. Flight paths that don't make sense on a globe, part two, or a pair, as Neil deGrasse Tyson would say. But in the comments, y'all were like, bro, just literally proved the globe. Bro doesn't listen to himself. But before we get started, most of you guys don't know this. East to west, circumnavigation, done millions of times. North to south, done zero times. Because maybe we live on this, and not on this blue ball or pear. But I've done too much talking, so let's go. So let's do Cape Town, South Africa to Auckland, New Zealand. So as you can see, Cape Town, South Africa to Auckland, New Zealand. Hit search. One stop. This is what they gave us. Cape Town to Dubai, then from Dubai to Auckland. So as you can see, what I got from Google Earth, we got Cape Town, South Africa, and then Auckland, New Zealand, right down here. Because we all know, or at least I think we all know, that from point A, 
to point B, the fastest way is a straight line. Like, wouldn't y'all agree? Like, But the flight path they gave us wants to stop way up here in Dubai. But I think I know why, because we don't live on this. We live on this. But anyways, let's check the Gleason's map. We got Cape Town, South Africa right here. Dubai somewhere right here. Then New Zealand right here. But can someone explain this to me? But anyways, please share this, repost this. Send this to your friend that believes we live on a globe. You can see curvature from a plane. Even though your astral physicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson, says you can't even see it from 120,000 feet. Doesn't know what gravity is. In whom do you place your trust? And do you believe in the word of God radically enough to believe the biblical depiction of earth? It's not just the biblical depiction. It's all depictions throughout history. The only one that's different is NASA. The Holy Bible, in which we place all of our foundation of belief and trust in, also gave us an example of what God's creation looked like. Having radical faith would mean that you believe God did, in fact, inspire these men to write these scriptures, and that God did, in fact, tell these prophets the truth as they wrote down all of the prophecy that we hold on to today. That includes the way that God described his creation to his prophets. Is your faith alone strong enough to agree with God and his creation that is depicted in the Bible? Or do you need some type of evidence to verify that there is a firmament above our heads? We can take a look at a couple of translations that were dedicated to preserving the original Greek and Hebrew. Complete Jewish Bible is one of them. And the Lexham English Bible was dedicated to being transparent and getting it as close as possible from the original text. A lot of people will try to say the word firmament in the Bible means sky, but as you see in the Hebrew depiction of the earth, there's the sky and there's the firmament. And in the complete Jewish Bible, it uses dome and sky in the same sentence right here. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The dome of the sky speaks the work of his hands. In Genesis, in the Lexham Bible, it also talks about the vaulted dome. It says, let there be a vaulted dome in the midst of the waters and let it cause a separation between the waters. So God made the vaulted dome and caused the separation between the waters, which were under the vaulted dome, and between the waters, which were above the vaulted dome. Satan is a liar and a perverter. He cannot create his own creation, so what he has done is he has deceived the world into believing in his creation instead of God's creation. Not only does every globe picture we get look different from the last, but also Satan has put his number all throughout the math. Apparently, the earth travels 66,600 miles an hour around the sun. Also, it's curved at... 0.666 feet per mile squared. That's the spherical geometry. That's the spherical geometry. The Earth is tilted at 23.4 degrees, leaving 66.6 degrees in a 90 degree angle. This was all of NASA's official measurements, and they've actually changed it since people like me have been catching on to it and spreading it like wildfire. It's now a 66.5 degree difference, and the Earth now travels 66,700 miles an hour around the sun. Why are they changing it? I'll tell you why. It's because Satan was so proud of his creation that he had to put his signature all over it. And now that we're finding it out, he has to remove it. This is a fountain in Sydney, Australia. And around this edge, it'll say Antarctic Circle. Remember that word? We haven't heard it in a long time. Antarctica is the ice wall where he's prescribed those boundaries for the water to not transgress. If you try to research this on Google or YouTube, it is all pieces that are just making fun of it. You can hardly find any authentic flat earth research on any major platforms anymore. We believe that Admiral Byrd actually found the dome during Operation Deep Freeze as he named a lot of the regions dome. And we know it was Admiral Byrd that named these regions because he named one after his wife right over here, Marie Byrd Land. And Admiral Byrd passed away right after Operation Deep Freeze and Operation Fishbowl ensued. And this is an operation where they sent rockets straight up. So think about it. Admiral Byrd travels into Antarctica, names all these regions dome, and then he doesn't wake up, and this whole situation takes place 
You see how that rocket's hitting? Looks like it's hitting a flat surface. Looks an awful lot like a bullet hitting a wall. Look at this. Looks a lot like what we just saw. So this man travels into Antarctica, makes a discovery, and the next order of business was sending rockets straight up in an operation called Fishbowl Dominic. Fishbowl of the Lord. Dominic means of the Lord. And you see this blue stuff when the rocket does hit the firmament? And you see this blue stuff kind of... You know rockets are scraping across the top when they do rocket launches? And it sends that same blue cloudy stuff. This is what it looks like when a rocket gets to about 100 kilometers up or 62 miles or where they say the atmosphere ends and space begins. Doesn't it remind you a little bit of bullets hitting ballistics gel? And this is the stuff that they're said to be testing in Antarctica. Sky ice. It's made out of pure oxygen and it's blue like our sky and it's being studied in Antarctica and it comes from the largest natural structure in the world called the wall. Guys. <laughs> and Werner Von Braun, he came over from Operation Paperclip, right? And he teams up with Walt Disney, the top animation guy. This guy's the top rocket guy. He was a part of the Operation Fishbowl of the Lord. And when he passed away, he put Psalms 19.1 on his tombstone as if he had something to say to the world. Kind of like a deathbed confession. But he put this verse on there. The heavens declare the glory of God and the dome of the sky speaks the work of his hands. Could the King of Rockets been talking about this dome of the sky? And all these world leaders have the flat map as their logo. World Health Organization, the United Nations, the World Meteorological Organization, the International Maritime Organization, and the other country's equivalents. <laughs> I don't know what that is. And when Jesus comes riding on the clouds for the whole world to see, how are they going to see it here? What about Australia? My buddy Joseph Sherwood pointed me to this, which got me thinking, hey, I wonder if there's translations that are closer to Greek and Hebrew that we can find some better answers because there's this big argument about the firmament and what that means. And hopefully this clears it up, but I'm telling you guys, the God of this world, Satan, who controls the narrative, he has been covering up God's creation. Not just that, but perverting it. I'm telling you, he's trying to create his own little creation. There's clues everywhere. Do you radically and authentically believe in God's word? I believe that there are spells attached to this, incantations, and there's triggers that happen when this gets brought up. People get angry. They get upset. I'm just on the pursuit of truth. I believe that God wants us all to figure out which deceptive spirits are trying to control the narrative and control our minds. This has been the biggest control of information war I've ever seen in my life. You could find all the 666s in that, and now it's being changed dramatically. The primary searches for flat earth or biblical earth have been manipulated severely. Google and YouTube both are the worst places to look up flat earth information or biblical earth information. They've got it under wraps, so you have to go to like bitshoot.com or a place where you can get authentic research and actually learn about these things.